Well, a dad can sometimes be described as a son's first hero and a daughter's first love. To celebrate this, author Kirsten Matthew has teamed up with Ideas Man, Mark Ellis, in a project which saw her interview 33 kids of all ages from various countries around the world. Kirsten and Mark are with us now to tell us all about their beautiful new book, The Greatness of Dads. Morning, guys. Morning. First up, Mark, Morning. did you just roll your eyes in when we called you an Ideas Man? Well, I just thought Kirsten might have scripted that. She said uh, <laughs> we've known each other for a long time. And it's, I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> yeah, because you guys have known each other for what, over 30 years? Yeah, <clears throat> over 30 years. It's gone just like that. <laughs> just like that. Just like you were kids. So since you were like <clears throat> five or so, or maybe even four. Um, tell, us, <laughs> tell us about the book. So the book was Mark's idea first. Ideas Man. Mm -hmm. Ideas Man, yep. hence the Ideas Man. <sighs> and then I put it together with his help. And. Um, I, I mean, Mark, you can talk about it a bit more. But yeah, well, why did you come up with it? Why did you want to do it, Mark? Oh, look, I, I just uh, think maybe the role of dads has changed a wee bit between generations and, uh, you know, with uh, kids' divorce rates being 50%, toss a coin, you know. Mm. Kids don't necessarily get to spend as much time as they did traditionally with their dads. And I was very fortunate to have a dad who was a, a, a cracking bloke and who was sort of set my goalposts and was my hero. And there's a lot of kids who have been that lucky, but a lot who haven't. But we each love our fathers for varying, uh, to varying degrees and for varying reasons, but there's not many dads in the world who haven't left an endearing mark on their kids. So this is a celebration, a, a tome to that. Really. Would, would you call, call, it, call it a learning tool for dads, or is it a reflection? No, it's a reflection. Um, it's a, I, mean, I mean, I'm a bit of a, 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 a softy when it comes to this sort of thing, and uh, from concept uh, really uh, being around you know, when, when your old man passes on, and it's going to happen to us all, and you know, the older you get, the closer it gets, I suspect, um, then you, you sort of go, well, I, I want to be able to grab a, a book and really celebrate and g get the emotional juices flying. And this has quotes and stories and anecdotes from, you know, people who have loved their dads, had, you know, curious relationships with a lot of them, but the celebration is pretty consistent. And the funny thing is, is um, exactly as you said there, we were just having this chat before, that uh, my dad has has, has died um, 10 years ago this year and reading this is exactly what I got. Just a really nice celebration of dads and just good memories of my father. Uh, so so well done. It's worked so far. Um, Kirsten, you wanted it to be not just traditional dads in the book either, did you? So what yes, have you gone that's for? right. I wanted there to be stories about dads that maybe weren't great or weren't always there and mums that were like dads and grandparents that were like dads, just to reflect the diversity of family relationships, I guess. And um, there's a lot of books out there that sort of give a one-dimensional idea of dads being perfect, yeah. and that's not really what we set out to do. It's a celebration, but it's a celebration of how different dads can be, yeah, it's, you know? It's, it's those idiosyncrasies yeah. that make your dad your dad. I mm. mean, mine was, uh, you know, wonderful a lot of things, but a dreadful dress sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, incredibly embarrassing, bit of a peacock, you know? I mean, <laughs> but all of these things make him my dad. You know? right. And uh, it's a celebration, I guess, most of those sort of quirky bits. Um, but when you read it, uh, I can't get through the, the, the chapter on daughters without getting a tear in my eye. Nice. Um, oh, where's that one? I'm going to find yeah. it. Well, well, no, 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 speaking no, no, of, of the quirkiness of the dads, was there at least a common theme, do you think, Kirsten, when you looked at it? I think the common theme is that everybody's influenced by their dad in some way. So whether that's an absence or a presence, they have some impact on the kind of person that you turn out to be. Mm. Um, and the other thing for me is that everybody has an interesting story about their dad. It doesn't matter how pedestrian your life has been. You know, I spoke to an American woman who was, you know, very conventional and lived her life in a very sort of middle-class conventional way. And then she just dropped halfway through the interview, oh, my dad once went out for coffee and he came back with a Lamborghini and a helicopter. You know, <laughs> like, there. That's an ultimate midlife crisis. Yeah, it yeah, sure um, is. And I, I love it. I love when people say to me, oh, you're just like your father. And yes. I think that's the greatest yes. compliment people can yeah. pay me. Yeah. There's a real celebration of being a, a dad who embarrasses their children. You know, oh, yeah, let, let's well, be honest, you know, all of our dads did that at a certain stage. I dropped my kid, to, my little boy to school today and he said, oh, I'm gonna, can I walk him by myself? 
<laughs> and he's only six. I mean, what have I done in the oh, first no, year? Yeah. Heartbreaking. Was it heartbreaking? I thought that happened at 13. Have you got the, have you got the um, file on your computer of 21st photos? Because every parent's got that, haven't they? Those embarrassing, slightly quirky photos of your kids that you put into a folder that you can bring You're out the 21st. You're saving until our 21st. Yeah. 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 My old man bought us a couple of, a couple of jugs and uh, he didn't come to the 21st. There's reasons for that. It was uh, <laughs> very much uh, blacked windows and locked doors. Yeah, no, and can wow. I just say, it is quite refreshing to hear that even Mark Ellis, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to his kids, they go, Dad, you're embarrassing. So I would have thought having Mark as a dad would have been quite cool. But no, not oh, no. the case. It doesn't matter. Look, we are looking forward to hearing more about this fantastic book. It honestly is beautiful. When I was flicking through it before, I'm sure it's going to appeal to every single dad and also to mums as well that just want a reflection on dad's roles in their children's lives. So we'll be back in just a minute, don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We're talking with Mark Ellis and Kirsten Matthew about this incredible new book, The Greatness of Dads. Now, first up, I want to know how many people did you interview for this, Kirsten? About 30 something. 33 people around the world. How did you choose them? Um, it was quite easy, really. I sort of put out to our networks um, all the people we knew around the world about and asked about people that had interesting relationships or different stories to tell. And, um, of course, people love to talk about their families. I think that there, were, there was only one person that said to me, I don't want to be interviewed. And really interesting, every person I interviewed went into the book. So there wasn't one story that wasn't interesting enough to be well, in that's there. that's lucky too, mm. because they'd be feeling pretty bad about the fact yes. that you put them in your book yes. <laughs> after interviewing them. Great writer, though. And great quotes as well. Uh, really, really good quotes from a lot of famous people. How do those come into being? So that was just a big research job. And, um, you know, a lot of celebrities talk about their parents. So it's quite easy to find those sorts of things and we just pulled out the ones that were sort of more meaningful or more silly, really. You've got to put a, you know, the, the, the requisite number of celebrities because it's being sold through the States and the UK, so um, you've got to have... But the ones we've chosen are Johnny Cash and Muhammad Ali. Like, right. one of the great quotes from Ali was uh, his daughter saying, you know, being in a shadow, uh, it didn't feel like a shadow, it felt like a cool shade. You know, oh, so nice. there's some really nice. nice quotes, Nelson Mandela, Barack Obama talking to his daughters. There's some beautiful stuff there. If you can get through it without getting misty, you're, you're tougher than I am. And what are some of the other gems that you learnt doing this? You know, situations that you thought, well, OK, this happens to me too as a dad, that makes me feel OK? Oh. The embarrassment's a big thing, isn't mm. it? There's a whole chapter to um, em how embarrassing dads can be. Right. Um, dads on the dance floor. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dad fashion. Dad moments, yeah. yeah. I mean, my father, um, never seen the snow, um, and he's in the fashion chapter. Uh, never seen the snow, but he turned up on the sort of the, the at Wellington on the, the, the footy sideline wearing an Apre ski suit, one piece red, <laughs> oh, crochet, no. crochet no, woolen mittens, a hat, and moon boots that made him six foot. And I'm just going, oh. and I'm calling moves, and my mate's going, don't worry about the move, mate. Look at your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first I got to play under pressure as a kid, you know. And there's beautiful examples of that, but. You know, from a personal perspective, you know, my dad's always had my back, that's the thing. Right. Like, you know, they can embarrass you, they can make you laugh and smile, but you always know if shit hits the fan, mm. go to him. And do, do dads treat their, after writing this and putting it together, do dads treat their daughters differently than they do sons? I, I, I'm amazed. There's a couple of quotes in there um, which sort of relate to that directly, but uh, I've, I've sort of often checked myself with, I've got a, a, a daughter and a son, and if he does something right, I say, cut it out, lad. You know, she does it, darling. We best Aww. not do that again. And you, and you just go, God, I'm being double standard. But yeah. that's the reality. You're hardwired, I think, as a dad, to I'm bringing up a lad and I'm bringing up a, a lady. Yeah, you know, but the so. thing is, too, you've got to make sure that you keep hugging them even when they're, when they're growing up and they don't want your hugs. Keep hugging them. Force hug, I call yeah, it. Well, that, that's nice that's one. the embarrassing bit, isn't it? You know? yeah. <laughs> but you've got to do it as a parent, I think, because they, even though they, don't, they pretend not to appreciate it, they actually do. Yeah. Uh, Kirsten, you talk about your dad in this book, too, in the intro. You used to go to work with him on a Sunday. Yes, yeah. On Sunday? Yeah. I mm. think my mum made him do that, to be honest. Mm. I don't think it was his first choice, but it was time that we got to spend with him without anybody else. My dad worked really, really hard, um, six or seven days a week. So we'd go to his office and there'd be no one else there and it was really, really nice. And What about the story when he drove the Harley onto somebody's bed? 
Tell us yes, that one. Tell us that one. <laughs> the, the midlife crisis I've got story. quite a wild dad <laughs> yeah. Um, who, yeah, mid, classic midlife crisis, got a we Harley at 50, <laughs> hence why Mark loves him so much. So um, we were, I'm sort of the classic uh, product. Of, I'm more conservative than my parents. You know what I mean? Because my parents were quite wild, mm. weren't they? <laughs> I'm trying to convince them that the best way to go out if you get too old, is to try and jump from the North Island to the South Island, but strapped with explosives <laughs> of all different colours, and basically have a big knees up for your mates, and then woof, and press a button, and poof, it's just like a Diwali festival oh. shower of colour. Obviously, I'm discouraging I'm this. Yeah, yeah. But I, I love it. it. He loves it. That right? sounds good. I bet he loves fun. it. So you're the ideas man for these. So you come to Kirsten you like every that week phrase, or so. I do. The I phrase have that I've just been going. Oh. Every time I talk to you now, you're going to be my ideas man. But Lovely. You, but you do come with a couple of ideas every week to Kirsten. Um, so what's the next big one that you guys are doing? Uh, Put you on the spot? Well, we're trying to have a family. <laughs> yeah. That's, not true. That. That's not true. It's impossible. It's, it's impossible. impossible. But I don't know, we haven't got a big uh, idea yet. That's, that's Thank right. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, congratulations. Yeah. It's a beautiful cool. book. Thank it's you. applicable in so many levels. Whether your dad is in your life or not part of your life, people are going to learn from that and be inspired by it as a bit of reflection as well. So go and get it now. The Greatness of Dads by Kirsten Matthews and Mark Ellis is available now. Make sure you